Hi everyone, I'm James Haskell and welcome to What A Flanker. Now today's guest is a very special person to me. He is my very best friend. He is former Gloucester, England, Northampton and Wash rugby player, Paul Doran Jones. You feature heavily in What A Flanker, mate. Well, I'm just waiting for the royalties to come in, James. Um, well, I'm not sure you know that, you know. <laughs> it's got to go into the Haskell Foundation first. But I tell you what, if you submit an invoice, I might sort you out. I'm still waiting for... I've put offset it against that lamp that you yeah, fucking nicked at school. Or the four pints at, yeah. uh, at Wellington. Which tell me the story that you tell everyone about. You, well, this is unbelievable. This happens... Well, firstly, you know, I got roped into a few... So you rang me up a, a couple of months ago and you said, listen, Doz, I'm... Um, I'm writing a new book about all of the famous stories. I'm going to try and get them down on paper. I'm bored of telling them everywhere I go. Um, people are bored of hearing them over and over again. So I'm going to put them into, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm diarising them. So um, you're, you're going to feature quite heavily, do you mind? And I said, no problem, mate. I'll tell you what you can do is take me for dinner yeah. and uh, we can have, you know, catch up. And you're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Anyway, as it's been, been released, you've then booked in a, a dinner in, in the diary. And what I didn't realise was turn up to Maple Street Studios and, uh, and here I am talking about it for earning my supper. So, yes, you are very much earning a supper um, because all good things you come come to those who wait. Now, we, we've we known each other for a long time. Now, for people who have already read and bought What a Flanker, they will know that um, you feature in quite a few stories in a really yeah. good way because yeah. you haven't actually... I haven't even asked you to approve the copy. Right. So no, because you, you knew I would approve without, without <laughs> seeing it, don't you? Well... I would do, but maybe by the time this comes out, we might not be friends anymore. No, well, I know, but you said that you'd used alter egos and different names, so yeah. I'm sure, in other parts, so I'm sure that if there was anything too sensitive, maybe maybe the name might have been changed, or has it not? No, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we have changed some things. I mean, I, I do make the point that you're obviously now Paul Doran Jones, but yeah. when I knew you formerly in your best days, you were yeah. Dozer. Yes. And you've, we've come a long way from that We character. have, we've left him a long, long, a long, long in our rear view mirror. Because before we talk about where we first met, I mean, you're, you know, you're a, a dad of three. Yes, that's right, yeah. That we've done off. Fucking hell, times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> times have changed. They have, certainly you, have. You're, you're, da you're dad of three, yeah. um, you're a property developer now. Yes. Um, retired? How, are you, how long have you been retired for? Uh, I think two years, is it? Two and a half years? You're looking well for it, though. Yeah, I'm trying, mate. It's it's not easy, as you know. It's a difficult, a hugely difficult transition to make. You know, you, you, you wake you wake up um, every day of your sort of life having a focus and a structure and, a, and, a, and a, an aim and a goal, I suppose. And then suddenly, at a funny old age of sort of mid-30s, me th sort of 33... Um, you suddenly haven't got that structure and you haven't got that focus and that sort of rattles you to the core. I, I know that we were sort of conditioned to, um, you know, take everything front on and how are you, how are you, Jane? Every, the first thing anyone would ask you when you walked into one of the clubs would be, how are you, Dos? How are you getting on? And you were just programmed to say, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to, I'm going to take on the world. I'm going to fucking smash the bloke. Well, that was where we started early. Now yes. when you ask, how are you getting on? I'm like, I'm fucked. <laughs> gone. Fuck. Yeah. So I don't want to train. Yeah, kids. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So, so um, that's been, you know, that's been a learning curve and a steep one, but um, mate, it's going well on the, on the, on the, on I'm, the I'm interested because I will actually die. I think the retirement stuff is actually, is, is really interesting. Um, with you and, and some of the off-field stuff, I think, because it's, you know, we had you on my other podcast. We yes. don't, we, we, it's called The Good, well, it wasn't called The Good, The Barrel, but for legal reasons, we can't mention what it well, was. We're not allowed to we're talk about it. We're not allowed to. There's a lot of things with you <laughs> yeah. and I have illegal that we can't talk about. You normally, about. I mean, you won't see it on the podcast, <laughs> but you normally give me that outside, don't I you? I said that book, right? I said, there's, there's a story in the book about, <laughs> I'll tell it now, is that Paul... See, I haven't read it. Like, I, I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, but he hasn't actually read it. Is that in, in the, in there's a book, um, we talk about fans and fans' interactions and that a lot of fans think that they're entitled to give you, you know, the opinion. I mean, I know um, there's a great story. I mean, do you want to tell the, the story about that time that you... Oh, no, shit. Yeah, no, because no. I, I changed that day. <laughs> oh, right, oh yeah. God. This is so bad. Okay, so, sorry. We'll forget that part. But yeah. there is one story when... That was so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there is one part in the, in, the, in the book where I'm talking about fan interactions. And I, and I said this guy came up to me in a pub in, in Fulham and was like, um, Mr. Haskell, can I give you, you know, a bit of advice, a bit of peace of my mind? And I was like... <laughs> Well, I mean, you can if you want yeah. to. And he was like, uh, you know, I've seen you play really, you know, really shit for England. Um, you know, I've also seen you play a couple of well, you know, you know, well a couple of times. And started to to, to give me a a, a breakdown yeah. of the game. And I, I sort of turned around and said to him, look, once because you know you can't. We had Roman Kemp on here, and we were talking about fame. And and, and I said, uh, you know, you're never going to win. You're never going to win abusing these people or getting yeah. into them. You kind of just have to suck it up. It's part of the. The, the thing of being in the public eye. But I said to him, listen, what do you do as a job? And he was like, I'm an accountant. And I said, well, look, if I went into your, imagine I went into your office and went, I've never met you before, you're a shit accountant, yeah. you never do, you know, never get to save your clients money, you're an asshole. He goes, well, you know, you couldn't say that to me. I said, well, why not? He goes, well, I buy tickets for Twicken and I pay £80, yeah. I can tell you what I want. 
So Paul and I, for a long time, we had a system where if we ever got nosed off, I would just give it this signal. <laughs> and honest to God, I was sitting there going like this. I think Paul was probably chatting to a girl in his single days, but he, he did look over <laughs> just to check whether I'd ordered another pint. And um, he came over and you were like, come on, mate. And you put your arm around him. But as he walked off, his feet <laughs> would, weren't even touching the ground. He went, come on, mate. Let's go and find your friends. And I, he was taken off in one fell swoop. He so was doing too much, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he he was, was doing too much. Yeah, so we had to get him out of there. And, and to be fair... There weren't many times when you threw that sign out that we didn't no. sort, it, sort it out, did we? No. So, um, it I was just, a bit of a punchy, a punchy experience, but we weren't, we didn't always get on. No, no, definitely not. I, I mean, as all great uh, friendships normally start, or in my mind they always start, we, we uh, hated each other or sort of feared each other at the start. Mm. It was sort of the immovable force versus the uh, unstoppable object or yeah. whatever it was. And I remember rocking up to school on the first day and you were you were obviously a big, bit of a big shot, a bit of a name, um, a big name <laughs> on school, campus. Big name yeah, on campus. I think you used to put those letters after your name, didn't you? James Haskell B. Knock, big name <laughs> on campus, um, which was <laughs> cringeworthy. But we... Um, yeah, we we just sort of didn't took an immediate dislike to each other. I think straight away. Two bigger men, two bigger gents. Yeah, heaving around, shuffling about. I think there is a there is a real thing is it alpha males. I don't know if you get it now when you go to a gym or you see something, you see a bigger man. There's always that like art, art of approval. You know what I mean? The bigger I'm man chat. It's strange now. I'm quite happy not to be the the alpha male now in in kind of walking around like day to day. Really? Because like, I haven't experienced that with you. <laughs> I know we're on a podcast. I know. Don't I'm trying to be nice now. Just yeah. trying to make friends, but um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I try not to get in too many conflicts now. I suppose, I don't, no, I don't know. mean conflicts, but what I mean is, is when you walk into a place and you're a bigger gentleman, bigger gentleman, they give you, there's like a nod. You yeah. get a nod from a bigger gentleman. You get the size up. You get a big Ooh, man. Would you, you know, would yeah. you, yeah, always a lot of man the handling. The size of you, yeah. yeah. I, you do, you do. And it's all, it's, it's often just testing you out, isn't it? That's what just I mean. To, just to size you up. And um, so we had know. that. So you turned up when you, because the first day of pre season, that yeah. was what separated the men from the boys. When yeah. you were, I remember you doing laps on your own around the field with all the, <laughs> Where all the rest of us were in, the, you know, it was a bit like, um, you know, almost like. Uh, you I was know. Rocky One, wasn't I? I was living modern, training old, and, yeah. and I was running around, you know, running around big side and all. <laughs> dan, 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 dan. Yeah, and uh, I could just see the gaggler lads just go, "Who's this clown?" Yeah, because it was a bit like you know, there's that TV series on Netflix, Cobra Kai, they're based on the Karate Kid. <laughs> right. It was like you were the you Karate Kid in right. town. Yeah. I was like that blonde one, the one who went, and okay. eventually gets filled in. I was in the gang in the in the bleachers, looking yeah. down because I remember going lads because I was a lot posher then. Yeah, yeah, you now, were. I've got yeah. a bit more. Of a were you in your salmon cords at this point or not? <laughs> I probably was. I was probably in a pair of boat shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And because I've got now, I'm not as bad as Nick Easter. Do you remember Nick Easter had the most fake Cockney accent? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like minty, minty. fuck, you know. Oh, hello, lads. Uh, yeah, but when you meet his parents, they're like, hello. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, Nicholas, right? My parents, are, I'm very middle class, I'm very aware of it, but I have developed a bit more of a geezer accent. So I can yeah. imagine I was there going... <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> who's a new fat kid running around the field? <laughs> it's not rosy even, cheeks. It's not rosy cheeks. cheeks. He's not even wearing the same kit as us. What a wanker. Bunty, bunty. Oi, yeah. like, Tibbs, go out and tell him, don't push him over. Because that's what it was like. No, it was. It certainly was. And you were you were definitely um, better spoken, I suppose, mm. in, in those days. And it, the geezer has come out in you, though. It has. I don't know why. Yeah, newfound geezer. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, I, I don't know why, for no other reason than... than... But you've sort of coupled it with this sort of bowl, haven't you? <laughs> With the arm where it sticks out four four or five feet. But uh, do you know what I've turned into my dad? A, a, a cockney version of my dad. <laughs> yeah. With a tiny shuffle. Yeah, yeah, a hell of a bowl, a Haskell, a Haskell bowl. Because you know, there was a teacher at school actually that um, that told me off. I've never got over this. Glad I brought it up. For, for he goes, oh, Mr. Haskell, you're always strutting around like you own the place. <laughs> It turns out that's actually how I walk. It was yeah. like a, almost a medical disability. Now I reckon I could come back and claim some sort of compensation. Well, I reckon we'd get away with that now. No claim. I'm know, not sure we're welcome no back to school, though, together. No, I'm certainly not, but you've managed to kind of mm. partial it all, all of the blame <laughs> to me, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have, I have. You've done very well with that. Because we, we will come on to that. So we so we actually, you know, we, we got to know each other, and I think about six months into our time at, at school, we, we then bonded. Yes. On a night out, I think. Yeah, I think we, we used to have these sort of impromptu drinking sessions down at the yeah. um, at one of the pubs on the edge of the ground. I think it was the Wellington. We? Yeah, that's it was right. called bizarrely. Yeah, yeah opposite, opposite the school. Yeah. And then we all used to kind of make our way back into the woods, didn't we? Yeah. And try and crack on to but the But I think what we actually bonded, taking the piss out of a mutual friend of ours, Nick Cortez. Right. He'll love getting mentioned on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, he will. It's a big day for him. But yeah, he will. He, um, yeah, we, I think we bonded as all good bond friendships. He's like, oh, yeah, fuck off, Cortez. And I, you came over and told, yeah, you mug. And, we, and that's, we were <laughs> that's like, how oh. we started. Yeah. He, he's, he gets, he's got the same sense of humor. 
Zuma. Yeah, well, that hasn't stopped, does it? With no. He's probably on the mega bus now from Oxford to London. <laughs> he probably is. Yeah, he's, he is 35, but he acts like a 65 year old bloke retired yes. out in the woods. Yeah, yeah, For those yeah. of you who know Nick Tess, just text him now and tell him to, you know, he reckons he's, he, he, he's, he's, he's done all the partying now, he's moved on. It, lads reckon he threw a barbecue there the other day and they had to do pay by phone to park outside his house. <laughs> he, he literally monetized a lot. But apparently he. Um, he had the barbecue. It was like a Rotary Club dinner. <laughs> Apparently, the youngest other person there, apart from our mates, was 65. Oh, my God. He's yeah. now in with a retirement set, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, yeah. we digress. So, yeah. But then, obviously, at school, there, there is a kind of a big a, a big thing we talked about. It, it's in the book. I had to bring it up because it's followed us around. Was yes. The, was the porn, the porn incident. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what, do you want me to lead well, off Well, I think... I'm just interested to know what side of the story you're going to throw No, I've told, I have told the absolute truth. Oh, I have yeah. Not, no, yeah. I, no, I, yeah, I will the just absolute, ca- <laughs> Are you doing the side as well? <laughs> no, but I will just caveat this by saying, because it is really important, and, and while we are uh, um, humorising something and everything else that, we know it was a fuck-up, we know it was wrong, we know it was a mistake, but we can't, you can't change the past, and we can only learn from it, and we haven't done it again. No, exactly, we haven't. I mean, inf- it, it, that's probably one of the positives, the few positives... Because it was a dis- disaster, really. Yeah. But um, and it has, and we've certainly paid the price for the crime. But but you know, obviously, in what flanker I, ha- I had to tell it. So I have told, I have told a version of yeah. the truth. Yes. Oh, well, not sorry, they're not yeah. saying that wrong. Yeah. I've told the truth, not yeah. a version of the truth. Yeah, okay. um, Interested to know which one that is. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it Plan A or Plan B? It was B? the one that yeah, it was the one that you told your parents, or was it? The no, it's the one I told because because my mum still to this day could not understand that yeah. it was it was like a, like, a, like my idea that I ran with it like I, yeah. you know I yeah. just it, she couldn't work out that it was she thought because yeah. you know parents see rose tinted glass yeah blind faith isn't it yeah. but I mean but yeah no I get it I, you know it was um go on you tell you well, so, so no so so we had a, ba- a basic for, 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 as I said uh, we were actually talking about on. Um, Podcast I did the other day with uh, Jamie Morton. Yes. My dad wrote a porno. We were talking about it, and he, um, you know, he actually didn't wear, uh, realize that I'd made a porno. His, yes. his dad wrote actual porn, and we we'd made one. But it was one of those things where you were seeing a girl um, loosely, and um, you know, you we were sitting there. And he said, "Well, you know, what are you doing this afternoon? We've got a girl coming to the room." You know, he said, "You know, I said, well, we film it. You've got a video camera." I said, "No, I haven't, but I tell you what, I can find one." Yeah. So I actually went upstairs and. Well, typical you as well. You went in. Uh, where we went to the AV club, didn't we? Yeah. The audio visual club, and got the best bit of kit. <laughs> they had just had a new grant or something. And <laughs> had these super duper. Yeah, it was a bit. It was interesting, you know, some of the manoeuvres and everything else. But yeah. but the point was is that we then. Um, I obviously once the job was done, I saw you leave. I came up, looked at it, you know. And I thought I opened the camera to see it. A few people gathered around, and then yeah. w- words spread like wildfire. What obviously pursued next was can only be categorized as obviously a terrible mistake you know mistaken judgment from us but then to a catastrophic failure on a number of, of fronts to ending up on yeah in, in front, in, yeah. front page of the newspapers wouldn't we i mean i remember i went home that night and uh thinking you know i didn't really think too much about it to be honest came back in the morning i could just remember i remember at school whenever anything big went down as you walked into the breakfast hall you could just hear everybody going shh shh Shh, he's coming, he's coming, shh, like that. 800 people quite hushing themselves, fuck, he's coming. And as I walked into the breakfast hall, this enormous roar, this like rapturous roar, I almost dropped my plate with my breakfast on it. But you I, would never you know, do that. No, I would you never would have done it. Food, <laughs> never have done it. No, I, w- I would have scooped it back up within three seconds anyway. But um, no, and, and as soon as that happened, I knew that the cat was out of the bag and it was just, um, you know, a, a litany of errors. Because really everything point. spends like wildfire. And I, and I, I remember it was a bad idea when I... You know, when you're in it, you don't see the wood for the trees. When I got taken out for a doctor's appointment, I remember I got a good relationship with my parents, quite honest, and I said, I talk about this in the book, and I said to my mum, I said, oh, you know, we don't want to believe what me and Dos have done. You know, Dos shagged a bird, and we found, you know, I've given him a camera, we filmed it, blah, blah, blah. Mum's like, what, what, do, you, you what do you mean? Yeah. And I was like, you yeah. know, that's illegal. You know, but I was like, ha, 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 what? Yeah. Thinking, I don't know what I thought my mum was going to do, was going like, to high five me, go, that's my son. I, I remember when I came back in, and I was like, um, I think we've made a, a, a real fuck up here. Yeah, we and have, I was yeah. like, can I. Can I give you the tape? I was like, is this because you're in it? You're going to look after it. And then unfortunately, there was a precision night raid on your on your room um, yeah. by the girls involved. By and Jay Morton and the boys. Yeah, by Jay Morton. Yes, they, the SAS came through the window and the doors, flashbangs, took your took the video, and obviously that's when we lost we uh, we, yeah. you know, we lost control of it. Yeah. Um, I obviously go into some more details about you know because there was the night in the bar, the night yes, of retribution. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. When. Um, uh, yeah, we were having a few pints, weren't we? You were the, uh, the sort of the barman. I was the barman. Which was, 
which was an incredible, <laughs> incredible misjudgment from the uh, from the powers that be. It was interesting be. how that 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 had happened, isn't it? You yeah. think of it now. Like the other guys on the on the guy was like there's a guy who like played Warhammer. There was a yeah. guy that didn't really get out very much, and then they let me. I know, run the I know, bar. I know. So you can imagine you like size of a house with a bowl and this arm sticking out, shuffling around trying to pull pints and do, but you know, hello, hello, Dos, what can I get you? Your usual Dos, and you know it was ridiculous. But I didn't used to drink that much as well. I thought one of the regrets I said in the book was that I used to run a school bar, and I didn't monopolize no, it. No, we didn't. Do you think of it now? All, no. How? How, I mean, I, I, I mean, I've got a corrupt streak in me a mile wide, yeah. but we didn't utilise no, that because we, we were such keen professionals. I know, I know. You know, getting angry with people smoking down on the pitches, weren't we? we were yeah. Little, how little you look back at it now? Yeah. We so when we talk about people smoking, so it's at Wellington that you know every every public school pitch, and again for people who don't like public school people, fuck off, we don't care. Um, <laughs> they, uh, there's obviously a hallowed turf. Wellington had a hallowed turf, and I remember we used to go down and fill people in who would who would uh, smoke on our field and stuff. You yeah. look back at it now and go, what no. are we doing? I think we weren't getting laid at the time, really, were that we? That is, uh, yeah. Well, you so. were. From the sounds of it. I don't think I was. <laughs> well, Ever yeah. again. That was, that was the, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the downsides. Um, but no, in the bar, I remember that night, and then it was it was all kicking off, and it all come to a head. And stupidly, we should, uh, like, it, one of the lads came came across and said, oh, I think one of the girls is going to chuck a pint over you, oh, you, no. you know, get your head down sort of thing. And instead of just wearing it. And taking it. And taking it, and just... Being like, I deserve that. You absolutely, I deserve a lot more, but I deserve that. We concocted another stupid plan, which was egos, filling, male egos. Yeah, yeah, filling up the dregs, the, the dregs tin. Do you remember? And it was hanging. Oh, it was and like stuff. a bucket. Yeah, a bucket of like old stale beer and Guinness and horror. And and I was like talking to Hask over the bar, and I said, "Mate, you let me know when she gets <laughs> when she gets to within five and yards." By the way, this wasn't the girl involved. This no, was, this, this is someone nothing to do with this it. Is a this is just an irate friend. Yes, and and and. and Suddenly we're talking and I just it just all went very quiet. Went just real been, quiet. And Has goes now does now does <laughs> now does. And I picked up this this big pint uh, this big jug of uh, of dregs and turned around and dashed it over this girl. This because the, girl. the thing is, the girl. What happened is, is that the reason we knew something was happening is that there was a pint of lager sitting in front of the table. Of these girls all hushed heads down yes. and all drinking wine. And it was just a solitary pint. And I, and, and that was the pint that was going to go over your head. And as as they got to you, when you dashed it in, she. Just forgot to, to, to throw the, the beer, right? Yeah. And and obviously was like frozen in, in hysterics. One of her mates has come over the top with wine glass. She's let go of it, smashed you in the head, yeah. right? Then all the tables have turned over. The pint's gone into your face. The whole place is erupted. Yeah. It's a school bar, right? It's yeah. like like you know, on a the, Tuesday night or something. On it? a Tuesday night, yeah, it was like utter <laughs> utter carnage, right? People, like a bad day in Beirut. It was, it was. It made like Syria look like a yeah. pla- you know yeah. a place you want to go and play. And what's happened is everything's disintegrated. You know, glass are flying. It's a full-on war. The lads yeah. are taking the excuse. The girls yeah. take the excuse. You're like you're covered. You're bleeding from the head. There's teachers come running in, going, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> like, everyone stopped, right? And he's going, "What the fuck?" And I've come from behind the bar, <laughs> right? A bit like if you've ever seen those World War Two movies where there's like a Ger- German soldiers are sitting outside a bar, and a partisan car will drive past, <laughs> lower the window. <laughs> And they'll all get machine gun, and then the barman will come up polishing a glass with not a bit of blood on it. <laughs> I've literally popped up by the counter going, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see a thing, sir. <laughs> not, I'm, I'm yeah. throwing a drink, I'm got you know, and I, we thought that was the end of it, but unfortunately, that was that was the start that of was it. The start really, of the, yeah, but night of the long knives, and then that was when I turned you in. Yeah, snitches get stitches, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, oh, you know. It obviously it all it went on a little bit and started gathering momentum from that point, but yeah. then I, I knew it was bad when I kind of got from my housemaster was. Um, you know, need to see you at eight o'clock in the morning. And I said, oh, sounds like trouble, sir. Is that, you know, I had quite a good relationship with him. He was, he, I said, that sounds like trouble, sir. Is everything all right? And he goes, just see me, you know, he's a work yeah. just, just make sure you turn up here at eight. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I've turned up first thing in the morning and he's marched me straight across to the headmaster's yeah. suite. And there must've been about 10 big angry faces in there yeah. at the end of the table. It was like Dragon's Den, but not yeah. as fun. They weren't yeah. trying to give you money. They were trying yeah. to get rid of you. They were trying to fire you though, weren't yeah. they? So um, he basically, um, that's the apprentice, but it, Anyway, I've gone in, sat down, and they've uh, thrown all these questions at me, volley of questions, and I've just denied it ad infinitum, which, you know, p- probably... Which is probably the lesson of most men, isn't it? The, the three yeah, Ds. Yeah, the three Ds. Well, we, yeah, we, we sort of grew up in our, in our young life living by the three Ds, yeah. didn't we? Um, Apparently now, honesty is the best policy, or so my right? wife tell, has, yeah, has, yeah. has told me. To yeah, tell, well, yeah. it's been, it's been a, tr- a tough conversion, isn't it? It has. It is difficult, yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Sorry, that's not James, is it? Are you James? No. Oh, sorry, fuck you. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, only to find out three hours later when the headman said, uh, 
Anyway, listen, we've had James Haskell in here from seven o'clock. He's told us everything. He and sang like a canary. <laughs> he, sang, he, sang, he sang everything. He told us everything. Yeah. You were here, there, everywhere. It was so probably I'm, the most, the worst portrayal of friendship oh, you've ever I just, had. Isn't I literally, it? I was like that. Oh, God. Oh, no, he's told them everything. 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 So, um, yeah, needless to say, that was, um, yeah, that was tough times. And then, and then obviously, you, I mean, you know, the media storm that, that yeah. happened after that was, it was a pretty eye opening for, a, for a, young, a young person to have to, to, to face that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was, it was aggressive and it was pretty t- you know it was pretty tough they, as you said they were around our houses and they were kind of trying to get stories and everything got infiltrated I, you know my career I think you had already signed at Wasps and yeah. you, you sort of you were a, a lot more established than I was as well and a better player so you kind of managed to, to wither that storm or weather that storm but I um, the contract I had at somewhere I think it was London Irish I think but that got torn up you know I was trying to call them and I was just getting that, that <laughs> dial turn <laughs> hi it's pulled on <laughs> as they were just putting the phone down. So I ended up going to university and pursuing my academics, which actually, in hindsight, was one of the best things I ever did. Like, I, I went over to Dublin, uh, to Trinity College over there, and thinking I could escape it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, right, I turned up there, sort of fucked rugby off for a little bit, and just kind of went, right, I'm, I'm going to go and study in. Because unbelievably... Those watching this probably think we're just kind of crass arseholes. You're actually very intelligent <laughs> and good at, you know, medicinal chemistry. And, yeah. You know, you've yeah. got masters in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I got um, A's at A-level and kind of, uh, which was mir- miraculous considering we had to kind of teach ourselves the end bit, didn't we? And yeah, well, because we... Exams in the headmaster's we, Yeah, we had to exams in the headmaster. So imagine... So imagine you've been suspended uh, and you've gone and you've gone back and you're like, you miss out on your last year, you're revising, your parents don't want to talk to you, you've got the media in there, you've got... I mean, I remember there was, um, you know, in some... Uh, papers they run a you know they've got um com- uh, uh, columns yeah columns but it's almost like opinion pieces yes. you know there's like an angry angry woman there was like an angry feminist and she rightly you know said that you know you two are absolutely depraved pigs yeah um you know and, and you know that's bad when you've got a whole comment section on why public school and with depraved yeah. animals silver spoon hooray henry yes know, yeah that was exactly who it was yeah. so and it was quite hard but then when you turn up for the day of exams and you realise you've got to sit opposite your best mate in the headmaster's <laughs> office trying to keep a straight face because obviously you know that you've done wrong, but because you didn't necessarily appreciate the gravity. My, you know, my parents are, my mum's crying every night. My dad, you know, dad, dad thinks my career's over. You know, you're, you're in the media. You didn't, you know, none of the people at school you're speaking to at school. And also, we had a lot of friends. I talk about on couples quarantine who got a bit. You know that you had a lot of men, but because they had girlfriends, they all suddenly become very judgmental because yep. I do end, a lot of pillow talking, a lot of yeah. like, oh, I wouldn't do what he's done. Yes. Anything to get dick wet, I mean, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, so we got we got knifed from, <laughs> knifed on a number of a number of avenues by yeah. some friends who were like, oh God, they're so bad. Oh, I love you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and then to walk into the headmaster's office where everyone's like seething, we've destroyed the reputation of the school, and there's you, <laughs> you sitting opposite me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was... I mean uh, we had some good embraces there, didn't we? I mean, do you remember the gap student who was trying to keep us under control, not talking? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was an experience, and it was one that you'd never want to go through no. again. But, but actually, in hindsight, it gave me the opportunity to go and study and and go and pursue that kind of that side of life, which which gave me a great angle. You know, I didn't go straight into professional rugby, and um, you know, I went over to Dublin and sort of. That's probably the best way of doing it, actually, because I think I should have probably gone to university or done something because I'm no. I'm no further advanced. I wasn't any further advanced by the time you made it versus where I was. I, I had some experience and stuff, but, you know, in, in what Flanker talk about, you know, every season at Wasps, I started the first game as if this is my moment. Yes. Fuck it up and was never seen again. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and I think it's, it's, it's something I often say, you know, having now retired and now having to take on that transition period that we talked about earlier, you know, that is such a tough, tough time. And I, I went through it with you know, a degree, a master's, uh, you know, really, really top A-level results, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it didn't make it any easier, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, I was active and doing all these things, but it's, um, you know, it, it, it's still, it, it still made it so, so difficult. And I think it's it's one sort of regret or it's one thing that I would point at the kind of the, the professional rugby guys, the people who make the decisions, is they, they're very adverse to letting guys pursue that side of their yeah. life. It's getting better. And it needs to get better, but but the young lads, you know, I remember it was it was either a play rugby or go to university. Yeah. It wasn't a both, was it? When we started, no. Really. And I think as well, you know, if you want to do a university, it takes you nine years, yeah, to do one, and, it, and it's, you know, it's great. And obviously, and, and and I think the problem is as well, all these young players, as soon as they feel anything detracts from what they're doing on the field, yeah, they just fuck it straight off, yeah, yeah. Which you know, which is is. Um, you know, it was interesting, but you got over to Ireland thinking yeah. you'd escaped. Thinking it, I got then... away. Thinking I got away. Anyway, I turned up again for my first day of pre-season there. Because they had a decent rugby club at the at the uni, and 
and I just heard, here he is, it's fucking, it's porno Paul, it's porno <laughs> Paul. And there were two lads from Wellington who were there already, um, two older lads, Tommy Burns and Richie White, I don't know if you remember those lads, but they, yeah, yeah, do, and, they yeah. and they literally sprung me straight away. And then for my four years at, at Trinity, I was known as porno Paul, so, <laughs> you know, I was there trying to, trying to <laughs> make a great impression. You obviously had an interesting time in Ireland because you actually got to work with, um, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know this, I don't think about you, because you came over here and obviously, you know, got eight caps for England? Yes, I think so. Something like that. <laughs> Who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, eight, eight, um, eight caps for England or whatever. And you uh, you actually worked with Michael Checker early on at Leinster. Yeah, yeah. What was that like as an experience? Because those Leinster days, they were unbelievable. Yeah, they were. But but actually, um, you know, Checker came in and, and Irish rugby was kind of going into proper professionalism. I mean, they had incredible... Um, talent pool but they probably didn't have the structure and Checker came in and really revolutionised them as an organisation and probably set in set the wheels in motion for them to have all their successes and I, I would say that the foundation of what they are doing sort of now is still there's still guys there from you know when I was kind of part of that if that makes yeah. sense um, but he was a really tough uncompromising Aussie wasn't he it was like every second word was count or fuck this <laughs> mate, mate. Yeah. and there was and that's where I worked you know realized that there were good meanings you could be called a cunt and still be a good yeah, bloke that's, like, that's what people forget actually yeah. as well is that when I was when I worked in New Zealand with the Highlanders we had um Jamie Joseph right, right. Jamie Joseph you know and he and he was obviously a, a hardened kiwi and he'd be like hes mate are you a gc <laughs> And I'll be like, what? a GC? I was like, I have got some GCSEs. And yeah. he's like, and he goes, you GC, you're a good cunt, Hesk? I was like, um, <laughs> I think so. And uh, and so the whole idea about the Highlanders, if you're a good cunt, you yeah. you were, you were, you know, you're a GC. So they're like, boys, this team, all about fucking being a GC. And But the problem is that other lads would then manipulate you because I get a phone call and they'd be like, Hesk, couldn't drive into the airport? And I'll be like, no, I can't, you fucking prick. And he'd be like, I thought you were GC. I'm like, <laughs> ah, yeah, I am. And you, you, get mani- you get manipulated it, all the whole time if you were a GC. So that was quite interesting. So I obviously check had the same mentality. Yeah, he did. So- he did and he, he was, but he was an extremely tough bloke um, and he needed to be. But, um, you know, I remember I was obviously there trying to pay my way into, into you know, round union. Dublin was one of the, you know, if not the most expensive city in the, you know, it was a nightmare. Five quid a beer. I mean, that's, you know, that's how I used to judge everything. Um, <laughs> And basically, they were like, right, I was a tighted prop, and one of the keys about tighted prop is kind of your weight and your strength and all of this. So they were like, look, we think you've got a bit about you. We need to get some size on you because you're basically, a, you know, you're puny at the moment. Yeah. Um, and so they put me on this kind of training program, eating program, and you know, I had. They really invested quite really, a lot of money. Yeah, in yeah. You, they yeah. were like, right, they were like, right, you've got to eat X amount. Because you could play on both sides of the scrum. Yeah, so you were yeah. a commodity. I was you? a bit of a commodity at the time. Um, you know, and and they basically said, look, this is what this is where you need to get to, and this is where you are. And we had this kind of detailed plan, and I used to have to weigh in, piss test, all this stuff, you know, to to, to try and get to get me to a position of sort of physical stature. Anyway, a c- couple of weeks in, <laughs> I'd fucking lo- I've come in on the scales, yeah. and the S and C guys are like, they're scratching their heads, and they're like, we don't know what's going on. He's doing he's doing weights three times a day. He's yeah. eating. He's He's lost weight because you were starting to rese- resemble um, an ultra marathon runner, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. They were like, they were just like, you know, had this like ultra lean sort Cause, of six Because yeah. you've actually carried on because one of Paul's nicknames is, is a turtle because he, he's just constantly got a turtle shell six pack. Doesn't matter how big he gets or whatever. <laughs> but you were sort of like a, almost like quite a V, yeah. big quads, but quite a thi- you know very yeah, thin operator, yeah, athletic. Yeah, and I, so they were like, what is going on? How is it? How on earth is he not putting on yeah. weight? Right, thousands of pounds of supplements. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything, you know, everything. And they, and they were and they were having to report up the chain. To you know, going where's Doran Jones at, and they'd be like, he's fucking lost weight. So they were like, their jobs were on the line. Anyway, couldn't they were going, what are you doing? And I was like, absolutely nothing. Sticking to it, sticking to it. Anyway, the the truth behind it was, um, a friend of mine had imported these rickshaws in Dublin. I don't know if you've ever been, and they're not the they're not the cycle ones, they're the running ones. Yeah, like so, kind of like, you know, like an Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Right. With uh, you know, when he's, he's running down. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. And it, so, and these ones were counterbalanced. They're kind of like a wheelbarrow and. He, it was an, a genius idea, basically, because Dublin's very flat, quite small, um, and we just used to... And there's a place in there in the centre called Temple Bar, right? right. Which is where all the stags and the hens used to I've go. I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have. Many a time. It's not my first radio. No, 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 yeah. no fuck. Um, so um, I would be found on a Friday, Saturday, maybe even Sunday night, on these on these rituals, earning my, earning, earning yeah. my keep, basically. Um, you know, and we had numerous little tricks of the trade, you know, where we'd... Where we, I'd have a little Superman, a Superman vest, and a little, you know, a little whip for the girls to sort of whip me around the thing. Right. And you'd make a fortune. You'd never charge them. A, a lot of hills, though, in there. 
No, no, it was quite flat. It was okay, quite flat fine, in the centre. It was quite okay. flat in the centre. But it's, um, you know, it, it was it was tough. But clearly, I was burning thousands and thousands and thousands of calories. But I was earning a fortune. Anyway, I've pulled up one night and I'm running. I've got four birds on the back and I'm sort of scuttling <laughs> along, pissing with sweat. And I've stopped at these red lights and I'm sort of hanging out my ass. And this taxi pulls up and he goes, Dozza, mate. I was on the bench that weekend, I think, for the, for the senior team. And, and I'd like work my socks off to get them. He goes, Dozza, mate. Dozer, mate. And I looked over and it was his checker in the car. He goes, fucking hell, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I was just like, oh. and he goes, I'll fucking see you on Monday morning. He could not believe, could not fathom it that I'd been running around the town. But I mean, you running around pulling women uh, yeah. all around the, yeah. the town. Well, and men, but yeah, many and women. Men, yeah, women, women could, obviously, yeah. yeah. Oh, big fat bloke. Can I get in? No, no. Mate, I th- I'm actually going for a break. <laughs> Cut <laughs> the ladies. <laughs> Listen, where are you going? No, 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 no. no. Paul, Paul. No, um, no, no. What, uh, yeah, so so you they the just the bollocking was was the bollocking the bollocking was monumental, um, but he sort of understood it because I said, look, I can't afford to you know kind of I can't afford to live here on the money that you're paying me, um, which was kind of peanuts really. I mean, really was peanuts. But don't, the, condi- the condition never talked to you again. No, no, he never he never spoke to me again. They were really fucked off. But like that was the theme of my journey at Leinster. Really, it is like I had an, I had a numerous. I had a number of these. Yeah, well, of I was going to. I want to. Yeah. I want to touch on some of these. But do you want to tell people about the? Um, I mean, first let's talk about the New Zealand when he t- the time he sent you to New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and he went over there and obviously check you. You check a convincing yeah. watching the tapes. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. I sort of went. I'd been injured for a, for a period and I sort of had missed a lot of the domestic season, and I came back and. Um, Sort of came back with a bit of wind in my sails, a bit of air in my tyres, because I think I'd gone quite well. I'd ended up getting picked for the, the the provincial side and played a lot and came back with decent report. And I and, and I was like, right, you know, um, I'm. And you, but also, you didn't go to just any part of New Zealand. You went to like yeah, but fuck no, but fuck no, yeah. so much so that you wore a pink T-shirt down the high street and they were giving you abuse. Yeah, people were shouting at me from the car. Homophobic and, language. Yeah, yeah. A pink T-shirt. That yeah. was that's how the level of tolerance <laughs> in this part of New Zealand was. And I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I mean, I've realised now with these masks and social distance, I'm a bit deaf, right? And I could just hear these noises and I was kind of there for bowling around the street going, I think they're shouting, I think they're shouting at me. I got one of them and I was like, that wasn't at me. Because you know what I always think of? You know in the scene, Dodgeball, when he, when he's, when, <laughs> when um, the pirate's walking along the strip, heartbroken, and they go, go back to fucking Treasure Island! <laughs> and a strawberry milk so hits the side. Head. Well, it was kind of I like kind of thought it's like you. It was kind of like that. There was this like strip, uh, you know, and, and if you blinked, you'd miss it. And that was the kind of town. Yeah. Right. And I remember walking down there with this pink t-shirt on, but it wasn't wasn't ridiculous. No. You know? No. I mean, well, you've you know, worn some ridiculous. Oh, I mean, gear. you are talking, oh, well, talking of wearing ridiculous gear. I mean, I'm, I've worn some deep, deep scoops. Yeah. So, I mean, I I had a deep V American Apparel. I think they only ever did two of them. You saw a deep V down to belly button. Yeah. That was my go-to outfit. That was your uniform, wasn't it? Your yeah. night out uniform. But you would have worn this pink T-shirt probably to a wedding or something Perfect, like that. So yeah, you yeah. know, so that's never what... quite got the levels right. No, no, no. Yeah. And and I just heard these people so fucking shouting at me, and I, and I was like, are they talking to me? And I just heard someone say pink T-shirt, for, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah. something, some profanity. Yeah. Um, and I just just like, oh my god. Anyway, I slipped into a little charity shop and bought another T-shirt, quick as yeah. a, quick as Still you like. Still wearing that now. Still got it. That's what I've got on now. Yeah. And the times aren't so great, Jim. <laughs> Um, anyway, no, so I came back and I was like to check uh, uh, and he was like, how's it going, mate? How you been getting no, on? No, so didn't he, no, no, didn't he go, where the fuck you been? Oh, yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go, yeah. Where the fuck have you been? And I was like, oh, I've been out in New Zealand. You you, you sent me there, uh, which is always a bit disconcerting. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, oh, he goes, oh, yeah, that's right. I've been uh, watching the videos of you on the uh, on the loose head, which is the other side. And I was like, I haven't played any, I haven't played any rugby on the loose head. He goes, no, 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 no. I've seen some really good stuff of you on the loose head. And I was like, no, 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 no. Haven't played on the loose end. Anyway, so we had this, we had this cock off where he just clearly hadn't watched any of it. So, because you know, I brought that up with him. Right, right, right. Staff from say, I went, I went, I went. By the way, checks because I had a good relationship with him because he was actually really successful fashion business. Yes, worth, yeah. You know, Make multiple money, million. Yeah. But only ever looked like he dressed in one t-shirt. He had one old sweat stained black t-shirt. That yeah, just and he had, had this heavy knit jumper that was like you know that would now be turned into a rug or something. Yeah, like that just two two gear. I remember walking in there and I went, hey. Do you remember that time you sent to Dozer to New Zealand and when he came back you went, where the fuck you been, mate? And I went, great, you were playing the loose head and Dozer like, I'm playing tight and he goes, mate, fucking Doran Jones, mate. He's a fucking storyteller, mate. He's talking shit, mate. Oh. And I was like, no, I, I definitely, he goes, fuck off, Hess. Oh. Tell hey, Dozer, mate, he's fucking full of shit. But, but I suppose I suppose the last one I had of him and I won't, I won't, I won't labour the point, but we, um, it got to the point where I graduated from uni and all my, all my mates had gone and I had this lovely um, flat on campus right at the yeah. bottom of Grafton Street if you know where Trinity is. And that went overnight with me graduating. And they were like, right, you know, fuck off now. You've had your fill. Get out. And then so suddenly I was looking at having to try and find new accommodation. And I didn't have, just genuinely didn't have the money yeah. to do it. 
And I kind of got in this position. I was sat in this in this flat, going like, I've got no food in the fridge. I've just done four years of uni, grafting my socks off. All my mates are going off to jobs. I'm earning, you know, nothing. Peanuts, yeah. yeah can't afford to eat. Can't afford to eat. And yeah, it genuinely yeah. was that. That was it. Was that stark? So I thought, right. I said, fuck this. I'm going to go, and I've got to go and nick my tea. And in Ireland, they'd brought in the, the bring your own plastic bags way before England, right? Yeah, so yeah. I've gone down there, psyched myself up, and I was like, right, if I'm going to get caught for this, I'm going to go nicking my tea. I'm going to go and get, you know, I'm going to go out hard. So I've yeah. gone down to a local supermarket, big Tesco's, I think. And I'm like, right, fillet steak, stuff that in, Ben and Jerry, stuff that in, something else, something else, something else. Anyway, put it in my bag. And I was like, right, just be cool. You know, just be. <laughs> so just you mean cool. to shoplift the honest? I haven't uh, heard this story. Not, have you not heard this story? I fucking never right, heard the story. So, so um, I was like, right. Just be cool and walk out. Anyway, so I've sort of got a bit of a bowl on, a bit of a wiggle on. Doesn't sound like you. No, right? And I've got to... Anyway, as I'm getting to the door, I'm like, just stay cool, just stay cool. <laughs> and anyway, clearly I'm like profusely sweating. I'm like looking everywhere, up, down, everywhere, shifty as fuck. And I, I suddenly, I just a, a, a metre from the door, I look across and lock eyes on the security guard. And I just looked at him, stared at him. We both looked at each other and I went... And I went, right. And I just took off from a metre inside the shop. Right, I should have just kept on walking. walking. He would never have ever, you know. Yeah. Anyway, he was an absolute kino. And he's taken me, and there was this long gradient, like it was about a long gradient. It was about a mile long, I reckon, this yeah. hill. And I was like, oh, I'm fit as a fiddle here, you know. I'm All gonna, the rickshaw. Yeah, I'm going to string him out. Yeah. And I could hear he had these really flat feet. So he was like, pat, pat, And he's taken chase up this hill, and I was like, oh, I'm going to string him out. He's never going to catch me. Anyway. Half a mile in, I'm like, and I can still hear him like, ah, 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 wheezing. And he's like, techazing along with these like clown feet running along. Oh, fuck and I'm hell. like, oh my God. Anyway, couldn't shake him. So I'm up this hill and there was this little sh- little kind of chicane. And I got round it and I was, and I jumped over a wall and I literally, my lungs were busting. I was like that, <gasps> adrenaline. And I just heard him panting past. And I was just like, what? Oh. I was like, what am I doing? I was like, what am I doing? So I said, right, that's it. I've got to go and speak to Checker next day. I went in to see him the next morning. I said, look, you know, unless you can sort me out with a proper contract here, I've, uh, you know, I've got to go. I said, I've stolen my ticket. He goes, mate, no, we've got you for another year. You know, if you can't oh. sort you, <laughs> you've got to honour it. If you go anywhere, I was like, I'm going to have to go back home then, mate. I said, I can't live. He goes, if you go anywhere, we'll get, you know, we'll, get, we'll stop you playing and all that. But fortunately, <laughs> he didn't stop me playing, but I did. I got a flight home on the Monday and left, which is a bit of a shame, really. Because you, you, you did have almost potentially a massive future at Yeah, well, well, potentially. I mean, I was Irish, and there weren't many, there weren't many Irish Titans. There still yeah. aren't. They're, you know, Titans are a commodity. And, but do you remember, um, I mean, one more story, just because I love, I love it about that. And obviously, you know, one of the best things about being, you, you know, sort of your partner in crime and stuff is, is, is laughing at each other's kind of fuck-ups and stories. But the, do you want to tell everyone about the Wagon Mama story? Because this is this is one of the greatest. Yeah, of all yeah. Time. I mean, it sounds like you know, I sort of. <laughs> I was the art- artist of my own downfall, <laughs> so wasn't I? But basically, they. Um, so any one of them didn't want to sign you oh, no, for more money. No, I don't no. have to be an expert. But, but again, out. again, based around food and cash, you know. So, um, <laughs> Wagon Mum, as well-known chain, had this had a sponsorship of Leinster, and they sent all of the senior squad members a Wagon Mama's card. Yeah. Right, like, a, you know, so you can imagine these things were like gold dust, right? And you could go in there whenever you wanted. I had a Nando's five, um, you know, a, a five-star cup for black card. It, black card, yeah, that's it. That was a big day. For yeah, massive com- day. Com- I mean, listen, often. and you'd love that even now, wouldn't you? I mean, oh, mega, mate, I'd love a card from anyone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, had, I had a ZZ's card. Yeah. That was the greatest ever. Yeah, yeah, Pizza it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, were you, were you weren't paying for those then when you used to take me there? I know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Shit. so I've got. Uh, they've all got these cards anyway, and this place was at the top of the town, and I, I basically saw, saw. They put them all in the pigeonholes of all the mm. senior players, but but like true true to form, they'd left all the young lads and hadn't given us one. Yeah. And probably the lads who needed it the most because we had no cash, yeah. right? And I've I'm sort of I was halfway in between. I think I was on a development contract, which was half what uh, one leg academy, one leg senior squad. So I kind of felt a bit entitled, but yeah. felt a bit aggrieved that I didn't get it. Yeah. Right. Um, there's always a story, has right? <laughs> there's, there's always a reason. There's always a reason. Always right? a reason. So, so anyway, these cards have come out, and I've seen that one, that, you know, in one bloke's pigeonhole, he hasn't collected it. Right? His name's Guy Easterby. Lovely bloke, Guy. You know, bit of a legend. Legend of the game, yeah. yeah. bit of a talisman. You know, really good guy, character. And I've sort of Really seen, important leader within yeah, the Masters yeah, yeah, squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of the main Probably, guys. you know, I wouldn't say, in comparison to you and me, not a bad, like, but not a skeleton in his closet. No. not a bad word to say about him. No, exactly. You know, Just never, top, yeah, yeah. G- general good egg, right? And, yeah. the, and um, I've spotted this thing, and I'm like, oh, he's left that in there. A couple of days later, and I'm like, anyway, I've said a week later, he's left it in there, and I'm like, he just doesn't know. He doesn't know what's hit him. Probably, right? never know what probably didn't is. care. Yeah, probably didn't care, right? Yeah. 
So I've whipped this thing. I five. <laughs> Yeah. Five that's what we thought the story yeah. was going. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I whipped this card and I thought he won't miss it. He's not yeah. missing it. Yeah. So I, yeah. anyway, and I had a term where I was like up to wag mama's three things, three whatever. Yeah. Anyway, stupidly every day, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, I could go every day. I probably went. Yeah, I think probably, you probably did. I probably did go every day. Oh, I just don't want. To, I don't want yeah. people to think you didn't fucking no, kick no. the ass out. Oh no, out I kicked the fucking ass out. Fine, no, no, kick the ass out. Um, anyway, stupidly, I took a bird up there one one lunchtime <laughs> which is always the downfall again Classic. and I was like come to Wagamama's on me which as a student is quite a big yeah, quite, punchy, quite a big yeah. swing right? come so, for a katsu curry yeah, on come, me yeah chicken katsu and, yeah. and a duck gyoza uh, and I'll give you my gyoza <laughs> number <later>. five <laughs> yeah and I'll top my gyoza so um, I, I've gone in there and there were just these weird little rules right where you couldn't order soft drinks or something she ordered a coke and I obviously couldn't I was like that, that I didn't want to be seen to be like don't you know, don't order a Coke. And when I've gone to use my card, the lady was like, oh no, you've got to pay five quid for the Coke or whatever it was. And I did not have a penny in my pocket. Like, did not, I was living a champagne student lifestyle with absolutely fucking not sawdust. Not even lemonade in Sawdust in my wallet. And I'm like that going, please let there be a fiver, <laughs> right? Go, in my mind going, and she was like, no, you've got to pay. What are you going to do? And I said, listen, can you just, I'll run back down and get you a fiver and I'll bring it back in. And she was like, okay. But wasn't very happy about it, but yeah. right. I got into the club. The next, I, I did run back up with the fiver because I knew what I had was absolute gold dust. Oh, Paul. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> are you, are you, I just, I don't know why well, you think maybe, this is okay, maybe, I, I can't remember, I can't remember, yeah. but maybe I left it, maybe I left maybe, it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I left it till the next day. But anyway. Or it, never. Issue, issue had already been yeah. raised. Anyway, I get into the club the next day and there's this like full club meeting. Everybody, all of the sundries there and they're like, right, what we want to know is somebody has been going to Wagamama's and using... Uh, so basically, Wagamama's had called in and said, Guy Easterby's gone in and hasn't paid a fiver for this Coke, right? And they were like, Guy Easterby wouldn't do that. Yeah. And they, so they spoke to Guy and Guy was like, I don't even know, I don't even have... What is Wagamama's? Yeah, what is Wagamama's? Yeah. Right, and then they can suddenly, you can suddenly see the old cogs ticking, cogs ticking. And they call this meeting and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. Checker stands up again and he's like... Yeah. Right, lads, who has been going a fucking way? We're waiting on CCTV. We're waiting on this. He said He said they've been there every day this month or whatever, right? And I'm literally there, like, quivering, shaking, going, normally thinking, but I just deny, deny, deny. And then I just literally, get, again, got another moment or a pang of consciousness, and I was just like, oh, my conscience. And I was like, owned up to it. Oh, mate, I got absolutely destroyed for it. I had to go down, you know, apologise. All the senior lads were fucking fuming because I nearly wrecked, <laughs> you know, I nearly wrecked it. Yeah, so uh, needless to say, it was... Um, so the length thing didn't work out. Well, yeah, it was more on off-field bits and pieces. Right, yeah. fine. But yeah. then, so then, so then you went to from there to, to London Welsh. Yeah. Which was kind of quite a nice experience, was it? Because they weren't in the they weren't in the uh, no, they were in the championship. Championship, and, but they were a decent side. Yeah. And they basically had a um a couple of players. Uh, they had uh, Sunya Koto, who was the Fijian hooker. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing about Sunya is he he was an incredible scrummaging hooker, if anyone knows what yeah. that means. But he basically bailed me out of any all the bad situations. Fine. Because championship f- up front row rugby is pretty attritional. Right. And it's just week in week out. You had these blokes. Um, as a bloke, Alan Paver, who used to play at the Cornish Pirates. Yeah, and he yeah. Just, you, you know, he was, he, he was like a boiled egg on legs. <laughs> and, and honestly, you come up against him going, like, I've got to try and find an angle on you. Because he didn't have any didn't he have angles. There was just no discernible neck. It was fine, just like, fine. it was just nowhere. It was like, just where? sort of smooth edges. Yeah, smooth, yeah. and had no hair. And he literally, mate, he would, like, crowbar your neck off when you were playing. Oh, really? Yeah, and he really enjoyed doing it as well. Yeah, there are a lot. Like, rugby's full of those people. Yeah. They haven't got great skill set, but what they do, they do it very oh, well. Incredible. And they love... He was an incredible player. Um, he was a great, he was a legend of the game, actually. He was a legend of that league as well. Yeah. Um, and there were loads of them anyway and but Sunya used to bail me out because he was incredible and, right. and um, but the interesting thing about Sunya he, he, at that time he said he was 36 and then I saw him this must have been in 2003 or 4 yeah. or 5 but then I saw him playing in the 2015 World Cup and he was still captain still 36 <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like oh my god he must have been about 40, 48 yeah Incredible because 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 a lot of the Pacific Captain Islanders of they don't they don't they don't the age the things it doesn't it doesn't it's interesting because I remember yeah. I played with someone and the same that they were thirty eight and I was like you're forty eight yeah, yeah, yeah. there is no there is no way yeah you're, you're, yeah, yeah it, was, it was incredible but I roomed with them um, in some dodgy little house in Hounslow um, and got signed off the back of it went to Gloucester the back but of it. Be, obviously actually when you did well at Welsh wasps. Um, 
you know, because I talk a lot about wasps in, right. in, in the book, and you, you, it's very interesting because you kind of they they were interested in you, weren't they? But classic yeah. wasps back in the day when they used to win things, they were very much like good to be here, take yeah. the opportunity. And I remember you came down for your first training session, and everyone had thought, fucking hell, has brought his mate to work day. Yeah, and was like, Wait, but then I remember you got a ball carry. Bumped, I think he bumped off Delalio, ran round Alex King, and no look out the back door pass. <laughs> Everyone was like, fucking hell, who's this bloke? Yeah, I think I must have been fresh off the rituals because that sounded when I was fit. But, yeah. Um, and, then they, and then they offered you a contract, but they stand a wasps, they offered you sort of five grand or something again. That yeah, was something terrible. Yeah, they, they were trying to pay me in smiles and magic <laughs> beans. I think we got down to it and, and we worked out that if I'd been a, um, if we, I think I got something like 15 winning starts as a provision yeah. to get an extra five grand or something. Yeah. And I looked at it and I went, I, you know, Googled up Wasp when they on their winning campaigns. The most they'd ever won was twelve or thirteen yes. games, and so you know it was just. And we went back and we, because we got a mutual agent Duncan Sandland who we talk about in yeah, um, talk about the book. He's a legend. Yeah. He, took, he took me around the world. He, you know, he's he's one of the best agents I've ever worked with. And he um he took you around the world. He bailed me out. Oh, he's bailed me out around <laughs> yeah. the world as well. He's he's involved. In, if you read What a Flanker, there's a. Uh, the 2011 World Cup, fucking debacle that was, which is another, yeah. another scandal. Someone tried to ruin my, my reputation. Yeah, their fault. We, their fault. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not their fault. <laughs> um, so Duncan, uh, Duncan Bell is out there. But I remember he, he looked at it and was like, 15 winning start. It, it was impossible. Like, no, yeah. Not even Lawrence Delalio had 15 yeah. winning starts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was an impossible thing. So, And basically, 15 winning starts would have won you the league twice over or something. Yeah. So they were like, you know, a 15 winning start tight head yeah. would be a premiership winning tight head. You'd be worth, you know, hot. Yeah, quadruple that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, loads, loads more. So we kind of. Fell out of bed, unfortunately, and... Um, ended up at Gloucester. I ended up at Gloucester, which was a cracking, you know, cracking, cracking decision in hindsight. Um, which is mega for you, really, because in, in, in reflection, do you think you should have left Gloucester? Or should uh, you I probably stay? shouldn't have left Gloucester. I had a great setup there. Um, I, but, but I suppose more, more really my character, I was just a bit of a mover. I never really sort of settled yeah. in and kind of did all of that. Is it because you stale. robbed all the local shops in Gloucester and I think probably I wanted? The birds. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think no. Um, it excellent, was. <laughs> excellent. For any female listeners, yeah, no, podcast, sorry, I'm it's joking. not actually. Look, there's no no women listening. I'm to this joking. Podcast, I was I a young single that. man there in Cheltenham, and I had a great yeah. setup. And, and the club was amazing. And it's a rugby town, you know it. And, and yeah. um, you know, it's a cracking club. In you actually got to, to live with Carlos Spencer as well. Yeah, when I turned up, that was incredible. I I, I sort of didn't have a house because it had all happened sort of overnight across yeah. the thing and I diverted from Wasps which yeah. was always the natural yeah. place I was going because we, when we were younger when we when we bonded we used to go to Adams Park together every weekend yeah. watch we used to pitch invade do you yeah, remember yeah, yeah, get yeah. all the programs so we used to, we actually invaded the pitch cut times before we thought the game was finished yeah 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 we do, I mean we used to do anything we could we try and get into changing rooms after match any bars. kit yeah 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 get them signing things we knew everything um so I turned up to Gloucester and, and, and Carlos, I got put in a wage group with Carlos Spencer, the king, you know, and, and I was like absolutely blown away because he's a childhood idol. And uh, he's just one of the most relaxed men in the world, but also in incredible shape. Unbelievable shape. Uh, and King Carlos, right? And so yeah. he was like, where are you staying, bro? And I was like, um, I haven't, haven't worked it out yet, mate. I'm commuting from London. He goes, oh, come and stay with me. And he had this massive, massive pad um, that the club had, uh, was renting in in, uh, in Cheltenham on yeah. the park. And his family were living in Northampton because he'd come from Northampton. So he would he was there in the week training in pre-season. Yeah. And then he would go on a Friday afternoon back to his home. And I had this monstrous pad. <laughs> I had this monstrous yeah, pad I can imagine myself. what went on in there. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'm not sure if this is one of those stories or not. But it's, um, well, you can tell it. I don't care. Well, okay. Um, so obviously... I mean, I would tell variants of this story yeah, yeah. just in case you go too... But I would just say, yeah, as to what actually happened. Yeah, I mean, listen, we just had, we just had a few raucous parties there yeah but then, but then but then the one rule from Carlos was don't go in, don't go in my bedroom yeah or don't ever bring anyone don't ever bring anyone back who goes in my bedroom yeah. sort of basically his room was sacred clearly and I didn't probably didn't appreciate it at the time as a young single man but he was a married man and you know who didn't live with and wives family. are very unforgiving yes, about any sort exactly, of exactly. any grey area where you're bringing problems in exactly exactly and so and so I probably didn't appreciate that anyway one night we we ended up having a house mm. party Paul Doran's pal- Paul Doran Jones's Palace of Love was yeah, yeah, open for business yeah it was fully open and it and it fully got it fully got used and abused and and I think you know that was the nail in the coffin with Fine. my living it with King Carlos. Because someone kept because Carlos came back and was like, he knew. Like, he knew. I'd, I'd done a full sanitizer across the whole house in my hungover state, and I think somebody had spewed in a bathroom, and I'd been on my hands and knees cleaning this bathroom, and I was like, I fucking nailed it. I've bleached it. I've like that is pristine. And what I completely forgot to do was look behind the door because obviously somebody burst for this for this bathroom, spewed all over it. And I hadn't looked, uh, uh, and I've so I've oh. Oh, my hands and knees clean it, but I'd forgot the door. 
behind the door. So he's come in, seen the door, and seen somebody spewing the pot. on the back of the door. And also someone shagged his bed. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah I know. that's absolutely fine. Oh, no. The shagging the bed is Shagging the bed, yeah, though. Somebody brought a bird back and shagged in his bed, yeah. Um, uh, do you think, I think in terms of your, your, your career, actually, because you, you became a dad quite early on, yes, yeah. and you actually became a single parent quite yes, early on yes. in your career. Uh, and obviously, I think it's fair to say we talked about it, it probably was... At, being a parent and being a single parent was kind of almost the death knell for your career. We kind of what yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. I, I, I mean, it was the making of me as a person. Um, it really was. Um, but I really, because of what it's what it meant to me in having having my daughter. My yeah, daughter, who's my, Isla, who's my who, uh, yeah. I'm godfather's Isla. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. not pleased me. I threw her in the pool. Yesterday. No, she's I know. No, me. no, she has. Yeah, oh, she was fine. Just, yeah, you did launch her in pretty hard, but I, I you know, that's rough love. Well, because the thing is, what I did is I threw her around underarm, and she went sideways the first time. <laughs> I then threw her up though. It yeah. was, a, it was more the face in the water. I yeah, think. Yeah, listen, she, listen, she was fine. Um, she did a bit manipulative. I seen it with my dad <laughs> as well. She was because she looked at me. She was fine. I apologised, and then she yeah. squeezed water on me. And as soon as the other girls came up, she cried with the whole victim. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. To watch that, yeah, I told yeah. her snitches get stitches. They do get. No, I that, did check with you as well. That is a monster. Totally no, it's fine. Me, How's Paul? And I said, Well, I just fucking did ask. <laughs> and I don't think you thought I was going. I just dropped her with a one arm. I mean, listen, it was no. I think it was fine. fine. I think it was fine. But um, because <laughs> you're a bit fiery. Because remember when you first had her, I whistled. Remember because I don't. Yeah. I wasn't familiar with the kids. I went. Oi, Isla, and you went, do not whistle at my fucking daughter. I was like, she's not a dog. <laughs> she's not a dog. But she's not a dog. No, she's not a dog. No. But kids, I mean, you know. No, listen, I know. But um, no, I think I think going back to your question, it was, um, yeah, look, it, it defined it defined me as a person and it kind of made me reevaluate what I was about. Yeah. And I think up until that point, look, we sort of laugh and joke about some of the scrapes we got into, yeah. but some of them, you know, were, you know, indefensible at times. Some of them were good laughs. Some of them were, were, were in between. So, but when um, you become a parent, that completely changes. It that. completely You've got to be changed, more yeah. yeah. And and then obviously, um, unfortunately, my relationship with her mum broke down when she was very young, um, and I sort of had a choice to make. You know, did I, did I take, did I want to be her dad and to have a serious relationship with her, which to me was to have as much access and 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 uh, and time with her as possible. But clearly, that having a six month old baby, five, six, seven nights a week. And trying to work and be a professional. I mean, split between sort of Northampton, London, yeah, and yeah, Manchester. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and and having that sort of geographical split was something that really, really took its toll on me. Um, you know, uh, and it was extremely tough, Jim. And uh, and kind of we laughed about it earlier, but you know, when I say we were programmed to walk through the door and how are you, everything's fucking sweet. Yeah, that's how I lived for a, f- a five year period yeah. of my end of my career. You know, behind it all, as you know, yeah, I was in tatters. You yeah. know, I was. I was uh, emotionally, like, mentally. Yeah, physically. I remember yeah. you used to call me the Swan. You'd be like, "Oh, mate, on the outside, the exterior, you're yeah. beautiful and serene, and underneath, you're fucking, fucking paddling. paddling." And that was the truth. And and um, you know, the journey I went on with that was um, eye-opening, to be honest. Like family courts, uh, access, or, or, or the attitude. Represent, you represent yourself. I represent in myself well. six times in court, um, and I I managed to get there. And I sit here now with a with an amazing relationship with my daughter, yeah. who I see half of you know week on week off. Yeah. A, a, an improving and ever improving relationship with her mum, which is, hasn't been the case, no. as you know, um, which is great, uh, and, and along with that may continue. But you know, I, I think uh, from from the experience, what I'm trying to do, I don't even know if I've told you this, but um, you know, we're trying to get. Uh, we I spoke about it on your last podcast yeah. that, that cannot be named. Cannot be named. Shall um, be named. Yeah, and I got such an outpouring from guys. Yeah. You know, and I think the stark realization when I was going through this is there is no support or platform that is out there that really helps or gives you um, a kind of a strategy advice, yeah. or a way forward to try and manage your situation. You often find yourself in it. You've never thought about it because who thinks about you know breaking up with their missus and never seeing their kid again before it happens? Really, yeah. I, I certainly hadn't. Um, and so we're trying to do. We're trying to take steps to give to give that platform now and provide. You know. A, but but coupling up with some proper legal, yeah, some proper legal. Because there team. are a lot of misnomers. But I mean, actually, what I'd like to do <coughs> with you is actually do just a topic because <coughs> with what a flanker, it's not, it's, it's not all about just trying to tell rugby stories and stuff. It was actually wanted to delve into some stuff. And I think one of the most interesting and remarkable things you've done is turn into the incredible dad you have been, but also the journey and how emotionally stressful it is and how um, you know the obstacles are in favour. You know the amount of court cases that are ruled in favour of mothers instead of fathers it's like statistics yeah. frightening yeah yeah it's, it's 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 terrifying actually in fact <clears throat> and it is look we talk about equality in this world across you know socially at the moment it's the biggest it's the biggest yeah. driver isn't it and rightly so we need to address things and we constantly need to readdress 
you know, and, and be and be improving ourselves, I suppose. But for me, one of the areas that it, there is a complete lack of equality is in the family court. Yeah. And this is what I'm trying to address or to, to at least try and use some of the experiences I've had or some of the and some of the uh, platform I've got, minimal platform I've got to try and open that up. Because, you know, I, I remember feeling as a father, um, you know, I had every opportunity to take this system on and to get a good result. Yeah. You know, I was a... Uh, I was financially, I was financially place, yeah. secure. I had a new partner. I had a house. I had a more, you're intelligent. You know, you know had what a you're job. Doing. I had all these things that I would have said, right? Tick in the box. Tick in the box. Tick in the box. Shown that I wanted to. You know, I was a good father. I wanted to be a father, which is the main, main point. And may I got at times I got character assassinated, walloped. You know, my size and my physique got used against me. Um, you're this. You're that. You're the other. And you name it. You haven't paid this. You need to do this. You need to, all these things where it, you basically start from a position of of zero integrity in the eyes of the law yeah. to be a father. And that, that's, that cannot be right for me. No. Because, you know, look, when these arguments and they, with the partners get emotional, as they do, which is a hugely emotional subject, yeah. it, becomes a, it becomes an argument of just beating the other person. So you say whatever, or you'll pay a solicitor to say whatever. Yeah. And, and, but the reality is, is that you've got to then navigate your way out of that and have a constructive and co-parenting environment for your child. Yeah. Right? So, so, putting those pieces back together are really bloody hard and we often don't realise that in the heat it's all about like you know I want to beat you and I want to get what I want and they're doing the exact same thing but the reality you lose sight of the fact that you know you've got a relationship that you've got to have with them for 18, 20, 30 years like yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, you know, we're still I'm still my parents still looking yeah. after me at times and you know I'm 35 so it's like you know it's it's a really 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 um, scary environment because I thought I had all those things and I would turn up to these courts and it would be like, you know, I would get the floor wiped with me by these barristers because I was in their arena. It would be like me taking them onto a rugby pitch yeah. and saying, right, let's have a scrum. Now, truth is, they'd probably still do me at that. <laughs> <laughs> Better but, you've seen Paul's yeah. scrum there. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it made, it was hor horrific, horrendous Will experience. you come back on and do a whole show on it? I would love to. I, I would absolutely love to. Because I think it's really important. I think, you know, a lot of guys who listen to this are men. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, we, we've obviously joked a lot about the Rawker stuff. And I think if you want to buy What a Flanker and hear more of our stories, because yeah. there's the one where you convinced me not to go and fill that bloke round um, when I was on yeah, the digger, yeah, yeah. which is a good one. Yeah. Um, that was more Zoe who convinced Yeah, you, it was it? actually. Zoe was convincing you. I think I would have. If she wasn't in the car, I think we would have filled him in. Yeah, but I think that's why our relationship <laughs> is so dangerous, because I come up with a scheme. And instead of you going, that is a terrible idea. Don't do that. You go, yeah. What, what, what time? What were we meeting? I'll bring the car. I, I've, nicked, I've nicked some uh, steaks from Tesco's. Yeah, I've got the wagon, brothers. Um, look, Paul, I love you. Um, thank you so much for coming on. If anyone wants to follow you and find out more and reach out to you, where can they do that on Instagram and stuff? Uh, at Paul Doran Jones. Gosh, I'd have to remember that. And <laughs> and on Twitter, I think it's the same. Um, but yeah, yeah. Please follow us. And and there's going to be details there with the new bits and pieces with the father stuff. So. Yeah, perfect. And uh, we, we, you know there will obviously be more stuff coming about that. Uh, I've been James Haskell. You've been listening to What a Flanker. If you want to share uh, and subscribe and review, that would be fantastic. We'll be back for more stories. I'm going to get Paul back on because you know what? It's not just a laugh a minute. We also do some serious stuff, and I think there's some really important subjects matters to be covered in retirement with you, and also um, you know the, the single parent stuff. Yeah. But we might never get a fucking another series, so this yeah. could be it. It's nobody, okay. nobody listens and nobody cares. Maybe we'll just have a pint and talk about ourselves. I'd like that. I'd like that. All right, perfect. I'll take you for dinner now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, please. I'm paying. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> I'll be in the black book again, won't I? Yeah. <laughs>